Welcome! In this episode, I'll show you how I saved more than $1,000 by replacing my bad air conditioner condenser fan motor by myself. This is my first in a three-part series on home air conditioners. In part two in episode 28, I'll show you how an air conditioner works, and part three in episode 29 addresses the 10 most common faults you'll most likely encounter with respect to your home air conditioner. If your outside air conditioner unit or condenser generates a bearing noise similar to this, it could be your fan motor or refrigerant motor compressor mounted inside the condenser at the bottom of the unit. As I walked closer to the unit, I could tell that, the, that it was the fan motor. This bad bearing noise signaled that the fan motor shaft would soon seize up and fail. Basically, an air conditioner works by displacing heat from the inside of your house to the outside of your house through your air conditioner's condenser unit here. If your fan motor fails like this, this one soon will, and you continue to run your air conditioner system, the air conditioner unit's extremely expensive motor compressor below will also fail. Basically, it will overheat and the windings in the motor compressor will melt and cause the failure. Unfortunately, this is a very expensive repair and in most cases requires a complete air conditioner replacement. Consequently, if your fan motor stops, immediately shut down your air conditioner system. In addition, in episode 29, I will explain that this fan motor failure could also be due to a bad capacitor. Consequently, if you're not sure of the problem and you want to fix the air conditioner yourself, you may want to have an HVAC technician charge you a service fee, troubleshoot the problem, and give you an estimate before moving forward with the repair yourself. In this case, I did this. My wife called an HVAC contractor who gave us this $944 bid to change the fan motor and called later to upgrade his quote by $250. He explained that he needed to add a new fan blade to the job because he thought the old blade was permanently corroded to the motor shaft, which I later found not to be true. Our air conditioner was only nine years old and this was the fifth time this HVAC contractor visited our house. So I thought enough is enough. $1,100 for a fan motor replacement is outrageous. For reference, I took this magnified picture of the fan motor data plate through the shroud cover on top of the air conditioner unit. These are the estimates that I obtained over the web from Amazon Prime and eBay. With the temperature at 95 degrees and humidity at 70%, my wife and I went with eBay. $1,194 versus $139 with similar delivery and repair dates was a no-brainer for us. I have civil and aerospace engineering degrees and I worked on refrigerators and air conditioners for three years during high school and replaced similar air conditioner fan motors by myself several times. So this was not an overwhelming task for me. Most importantly, the purpose of this video is to show you how to perform the same or a similar fan motor replacement even though you don't have my technical air conditioning or engineering experience. Enough with my introduction. Let's get to work and replace this bad fan motor. My fan motor just arrived from eBay. As you can see, it came from Fort Smith HVAC in Fort Smith, Arkansas through eBay directly to me. Looks like we have a box within a box. So we'll unpack the motor at this time. And see what we got. It's out of the box. Its data plate shows that it is a valid replacement motor. It's identical in size, color, and has the same colored wire connections. The tools you'll need for this job are as follows. Wire ties, small crescent wrench, small socket set, grill tape or duct tape, pliers, wire brush, regular brush, drill with the socket attachment, and knee pads. Step one is to remove the major circuit breaker or power disconnect from the black box adjacent to the air conditioner condenser. We'll now remove the screws connecting the fan motor shroud to the condenser frame. You 
see that's very easy to do. We'll put the bolts in here so we don't pocket on the side of that pouch so we don't uh, lose those. Next we'll remove the bolts for the, for the electrical access panel. These four bolts here. and remove the access panel itself. Set it over here and put the access panel bolts in a different pocket here. And let's flip the fan motor over, see what we have. And the fan motor turned over. And next step is to remove the, the fan blade. To do this, we're gonna use a small crescent wrench here and loosen this set screw. Okay, comes right off. If you have problems getting yours off, I put some penetrating oil in the shaft and, and work on it. As you can see, the shaft is frozen, frozen solid. Here. Put the blade over here, out of sight. With the electrical access panel removed, I triple checked all of the black, yellow, and brown fan motor wires and their connections within the electrical panel. I did this by tracking and recording each of the failed fan motor wires to their connection points in the panel. I started with the brown wire and continued with the other two wires. In addition, I took pictures of these connecting terminals to absolutely ensure that I could connect the new fan motor properly. It's critical that you do this correctly. With a 230 volt system, improper wiring could blow up or burn out the entire system. With the wires disconnected, I pull them up and through the condenser's sheet metal case and then remove the fan motor's protective sleeve. I then move the motor and shroud to my patio table so I could remove the old motor from the shroud. On the table, I rested it on top of this plastic ammo box. Okay, I returned to my basement shop and picked up my socket, wrench socket, and a 7 16 inch socket here to remove these bolts. And surprisingly enough, even the rusted ones really turn easily. Okay, so the motor comes off very easily. Uh, okay, with that said, Let's move to the, to the other motor. And as you can see, these bolts coming out are a little bit longer than the ones uh, protruding through the top of the shroud and I suspect we're gonna have to cut those down. Okay, I have uh, duplicated the the length of each one of these mounting bolts protruding from the uh, bottom of the motor onto the new motor and mark them with this tape. So at this time we're gonna go ahead and trim these off with our Dremel. Okay, so I've, I've duplicated the, the length from the original motor here with my caliber over here and marked it, secured the shaft so it really can't turn while we're cutting. And we're gonna cut it with my Hercules angle saw, angle grinder that I purchased from Harbor Freight. Okay, 
Okay, well, we finished our cuts and I uh, screwed each uh, lug bolt back onto the, the mounting posts here uh, to ensure the threads weren't cross thread, nothing was cross threaded, and it worked out fine. Using a uh, Dremel like that provides a, a nice clean cut uh, so you don't have problems with, with cross threading cross when you reapply the nuts. So, with that said, let's replace the shroud. And as I mentioned before, so they should lock in a position pretty good. Okay, we'll hand tight these, uh, hand tighten them. And let's apply a little bit of torque to them. Careful not they're small bolts, so you don't want to strip the nut threads either. Okay, let's go ahead and mount this back to the uh, on the air conditioner. Okay, prior to attaching the uh, the fan blade, let's go ahead and reroute these through. the uh, protective sleeve and it worked out fine and let's route the wires back down below As you recall, they go through this hole in the shroud here. And over here, through this slot. The brown, yellow, and black. Okay, we've rerouted those through. Uh, let's place our fan blade back onto the, the motor at this time. Reinstall the, the fan blade at this time. And if you recall from when I removed the fan bay, there, it, the shaft is a little longer than the actual blade itself, but they have it installed flush with the top tangent right up here at the very top so we're gonna we're gonna that you would normally have okay we've got the blade on there tight as you can see it spins real well let's go ahead and flip flip over our shroud and 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 motor and blade mechanism at this time for mounting careful not to bang the blade and bend it we're doing this and we'll feed the wires in over here just like it was originally set up and we have it aligned properly okay at this time we'll reinstall our our nuts that secure the shroud to the top of the condenser frame Okay, so we we have the wires run, run, and we're ready to attach the wires at this time. Okay, as you recall, the brown term, the brown wire goes to the capacitor on the left, black to the top of the relay on the left, and yellow to the bottom of, of the relay. So brown goes in place here. And it's in place. Black to the top of the relay on the left. It's in place. And yellow to the bottom of the relay. And it 
that's in place. Okay, prior to starting the unit, I'm gonna double check these connections with the phone picture that I just took to make sure that they're absolutely correct. Okay, so I've routed all the wires, check my, double check my connections. Brown goes to the top of the capacitor on the left terminal, black tied in to the top of the, of the relay here, and the yellow the bottom of the relay on the right. And I've also wire tied these up so when we put the shroud back on, they'll be ready to go. So at this time, we're ready to replace the, the fuse and see if it runs. Fuse in, as you can see it starts up. We've got a good insulation. Success. I finished the job by reinstalling the electrical panel and checking the fan motor airflow to ensure that it comes up and out of the condenser. If it flows in the wrong direction, appropriately change your wire connections as shown in this YouTube video. This concludes the replacement of my air conditioner fan motor where I saved more than $1,000. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and select the YouTube bell so YouTube will notify you of all my new projects immediately after I publish them. At this time I'm moving on to my next project. You're more than welcome to follow. In addition, if you have a great project that you want to post on my YouTube channel, email me some pictures and a brief description of it. If it qualifies for the Let's Fix It Right standards to help others, I'll interview you over the phone as a guest do-it-yourselfer, produce a high-quality video, and post it on my Let's Fix It Right channel. For the year following this posting, I'll share 50% of the potential YouTube benefits with you. If you have any subject matter requests or recommendations, please contact me. All of this said, I recommend that you subscribe to my channel, follow my projects, and save a bundle of money doing it.